My name is Akib Vani. Hello, hello, hello. What I do, I'm an experiential designer with deal in brand identity design, event design, weddings, and some launches when it comes to brands. A lot of experiential designs is what we essentially cater to. Right now, there's also some bit of it, which is custom hand-painted jackets that you see here, all of color. I look like a truck, someone told me earlier today. I was like, okay, great. Uh, just to come to our point, you know, what is it that we're here to talk about today, which is the panoramic perspective. And you know, and that, I wanna take you all through the AWD lens. Now, there's a reason why we're talking about all of this, you know, and to talk about my own topic, which is exploring through art. Now, I'm someone who's, you know, been a self-taught designer, meaning college wallage nahi gaya. School khatam kiya, ek dam se kaam pe lag gaye. So everything that you see in this PPT is something that I've learned on my own. You know, it's something that I've built over the years. And after many, many failures, many, many disappointments, many, many, are mera uh, Sharma ji ka ladka kitna acha kar raha, aapka ladka kya kar raha hai? You know, a lot of that also is something that's a part of this. So I grew up in a Kashmiri household and uh, you know, obviously, like I said, Sharma ji's son's example, this is obviously something that we also had to go through as a, as you know, while growing up is when I was like, okay, I'll probably have to do best at my studies, but I was extremely terrible at studies, right? And this is where I actually belong from Kashmir, as we all know, troubled state in the country. And then, but then again, that didn't really stop me. My parents migrated to uh, Delhi in the 80s. That's where I was born and brought up, and that's how the whole Spank started. So, exploring through art, right? So, my first interaction with design essentially was with the artisans of Kashmir because this is also where my father, you know, who deals in Kashmiri handicrafts, this is when my first interaction with design was really. And I was like, okay, maybe I need to see what these guys are coming up with. And every time they would come, they would go. Six months later, they would come back with something really phenomenal. And I used to just wonder, they've not been to a design school. This is something that they're, you know, they've just learned on their own and something that just comes to them and they naturally end up doing. So it was always a, you know, a big question mark in my head. Okay, so, I mean, if they can do it, so can I. So, you know, there was always that and this was me in school, obviously. Like I said, I couldn't be that Sharma Ji's kid, but then again, at the same time, this is me. I failed in my 11th standard, right? And this is purely because, uh, you know, I had no interest in studies, absolutely zero zilch. And uh, from there on, I thought maybe, you know, now is the time I can actually, you know, now that I have to repeat class, you know, you have that uh, confidence saying, you know, maybe I can actually do well this time. But to my surprise, second time, I failed again. I was like, Are, aise kaise ho gaya? like, you know, obviously this became as a shocker to me as well. And so to my parents, and then I was like, okay, that's fine. I'll cry in one corner and then just, you know, let for things to happen for me. And then at the same time, you know, just sort of got into, you know, getting into a, a drawing. And then, you know, also at the same time, a lot of emotional damage because you're like, Ek bari nahi fail hua, do bari, same class, what am I supposed to do with my future? Right, that was always a question mark. Having said that, I got into playing music, right? So this is me when I started playing music for a metal band in school because I was like, you know what? Let me just do what I want to. Even though it was difficult, but at the same time, ended up doing all these fun things. So there is the A1 personality, as you can see. And uh, moving past, this was my band called Phobia. And that's right there, me, as well. Bas, comment nahi hai, yaad rakhna. So beyond that, you know, I started working. And you know, this is when my band was performing. Then we also wanted to sort of start promoting our shows. This is when I was like, you know what, let's do one thing. Let's start making artwork for bands for my own self, right? You know, like I wanted to promote the shows and all of that. So ended up making artwork for other bands slowly. Soon, you know, other bands were like, Akib, I love what you're doing with your own band. Why don't you make stuff for my band as well? So this is soon enough, you know, a lot of bands started approaching me. And this is how I sort of started, you know, getting a small little income to just to get my own dreams of me playing in a band, touring the world and all of that, you know, back then when I was about 17. So this is right out of school. This is what I was doing, in fact, working with all of that. So while this happened, you know, yeah, this is some of the work that I'd done for some DJs, some more artworks, you know, a lot of this stuff. Also got to work on a lot of cool festivals also back then. Right, so this is some of the work from then. And 
Slowly, yes, lots of gory stuff because we are in a metal band, you have to look scary and all of that. Keeping that all aside, all of this actually ended up, you know, landed me a job at Roxy Journal, which was the only music magazine back then. Now, you know, playing in a band to be a part of a music magazine was something that I was like, well, this is great. And then I got a call saying, you know what, your aesthetics match with ours, why don't you come join us? And I was the design intern, right, at the beginning. And at, at like 2010, this is what I'm talking about. And from an intern, you know, I ended up becoming the art director for the magazine in about four years. And that was something that I was like, wow, that's, you know, obviously for someone who comes from zero knowledge about design because I hadn't studied any. And this was all of what I had picked up online, YouTube, how to Photoshop. So, you know, basic things as that. And 2014 is when I actually started working with a spatial designer because I was like, you know what? See clear, you know, 2D business is done. How do I sort of move on to 3D? Purely because I was like, you know what, life is getting mundane, it's getting monotonous. The same thing I'm doing over and over again, I want some change. So this is another exploration in an art form in 2014. Now why I'm talking about exploration? Because exploring through art, since that's my topic, and I just want to take you all through this journey of sort of how I've explored through different uh, mediums, right? So 2014 is when I joined Scenographia Sumat. We would essentially work with, you know, a lot of designing big weddings, big scale weddings, right? The ones that you would always talk about, like, you know, uh, the ones you'd come in news and all of that. So we would go, you know, have uh, weddings where we would spend literally months building up for just, you know, something that would be there for six hours, you know, almost like it was ephemeral in that sense, right? So these are some of the images of work that I had done while I was working with Sumanth as well. So these are just some of those fancy, fancy stuff that we worked on. And as well, 2016 is where, you know, sort of a life-changing experience happened for me. This is where we were, you know, a part of this uh, uh, design exhibition called London Design Biennale. And what was happening there was, uh, you know, you were actually uh, representing India. And this was me while I was with someone's team. And what was happening was, you know, there were about 37 countries. And at the same time, you know, this was something that we had created as an exhibition. And we had come in, in the top three of, you know, all of the entire thing where you had literally the best of the countries, best of the work. It was almost like an eye opener for me as well. That's when I sort of realized, okay, installations and all of that, there's a world out there that's apart from weddings, right? So almost like 2016 was that my awakening year. And that's when I decided somewhere in 2016, 17, 18, you know what? karna. Now I want to do something for my own self. So 2018 is when Akewani design happened. And this is essentially my life since 2018 till about today and probably will continue to happen, which is just work and a lot more of work. And, you know, Akewani design was born in that sense as well. So first biggest client, you know, I want to talk about this because obviously you're just like, you know, you've gone, off, gone out of uh, uh, your comfort of having a salary and then having literally no money, very bare minimum in your savings account and then you're just like, okay, I want to start my own studio but then again, jeb mein kuch athanni paise bache hai, how do I sort of, you know, take, uh, take this on? To my surprise, the very first biggest client that I had was the Amanis, right? So I was like, okay, great, nice to know this, that uh, they have reached out to me saying, there is a Sangeet uh, you have to design. Back then I wasn't really informed that who the client was, I was like, great. I wouldn't have been able to do it because of the pressure, right? So what we ended up designing was a crafts bazaar, right? In your head, you would be like, Kaun karta hai crafts bazaar? Shadi pe tum saman ho. But then again, they managed to have make that happen. And this was some of the work where we actually involved crafts from all across the country where, you know, we had one of each item that was out there. Even the flo floral decorations that you saw were all made out of crafts. Now, this floral decoration essentially belongs to West Bengal called Chola Peet, also very sustainable, nothing, there's no like, you uh, you know, wastage of anything. You could reuse these, you know, unlike real flowers. So there's a conscious effort there as well. So beyond that, there was all of that happening. Second biggest client, now this would again surprise me, like, you know, I was like, okay, ek to ho gaya, iske baad kya? It happened again, it was the Amani's again, it was their second, uh, it was their son's wedding this time, and I got to be the art director there, and you know, to be a part of the whole wedding, this was something that was big for me, saying that, okay, I'd never worked on a scale as big as this, but coming from 
a zero background of having no studies to be able to get there is somewhere I felt like, okay, maybe I can do things. You know, you always have that self-doubt, but at the same time, I was just doing my own thing at the same time, right? So there was nothing that I was like, you know, having those thoughts, okay, maybe I can, maybe I can't. I was just doing my own thing, right? Here are some of the images from the event itself. It was a lot of fun. Now, people would also feel, are itne pehle hi do client aapke paas aise, you know, the first two events that you're working on, you've gotten such great, uh, big body of work and everyone must be thinking, ah, note ke paise pe aap bed bana ke let rahe honge. So that was not the case though, even though people would assume that there's a bed full of money, but then again, that's just, I like putting memes, as you can see. Uh, music festivals also very, very essential to what I do, have, have been doing. It's also something that almost shapes who I am also because, you know, I used to be a musician myself and then have been working with musicians over the years, working with small events and, you know, with music festivals, there was Lollapalooza. They reached out to me. Actually, they didn't. You know, usually people reach out and, you know, there was a rumor last year that there's a big major international festival coming in India. And I was very curious as to, okay, I really need to be in. So I actually slid into someone's DMs on LinkedIn saying, listen, hey, hi, hello, I can do this for you guys. I would love to come on board. And that's how I actually got the gig by saying, you know, <coughs> people would usually think, Are, nahi yaar, I don't want to DM anyone. It probably is something that would be a little too much. But that's how I actually got the gig. You know, I ended up sending that message out. So these are just some of the images. Lots of fun, obviously, from building brand identity to going on ground. So they called me as the creative director for the entire event, was, which was very, very fun to be a part of because it being a glo global festival, right? So it was something that was entirely, purely fun to be a part of. And uh, with 60,000 people, I felt like, you know, that was essentially the best event I've ever been a part of or designed. These are some of my images from the past where, you know, I've worked with Weekender, you know, as you can see, there are a lot of these installations that are all very, uh, you know, interactive. And this is a kinetic installation. So there's a lot of play of color at these festivals, which is what I truly like and also what I truly represent. So this is also an image of my team. This is back from 2019. This was a very cool interactive installation. The problem here with this was, you know, there was a stage that was at least 400 feet away. The problem that they threw at us was they're like, how do we send people that side? So I was like, you know what, let's create a tunnel where people can come interact. So all you had to do was spin one of these disks, automatically the whole lane came alive and you know, the problem of you know, having people to go through to that stage that was at the end, other end got solved as well. Janta happy, stage happy, I mean, you know, and the brand as well happy. So that's how we sort of take care of experiential design. So I know a lot of people keep asking, what is experiential? Kya experience it? This is what experiential design really stands for. So, brand launches is also something that we do. These are some of the images where, you know, we want to bring in uh, an experience entirely, right? When I said experiences, this is the kind of experience, right? Earlier in the day, what would happen is you would go to an event, you would have a stage, you would have a bar, listen to music, have drinks, go back home. Nothing to take back, right? Where is the experience? That's where designers like us come in between. And, you know, we create an environment of sorts where you sort of forget you're in probably PKC. Like for this example, you ended up creating a dome of sorts with projection mapping on the ceiling. So you felt like you've been transported into another world. And then all of that through content building and everything, you sort of create that whole vibe, right? Just so that, you know, as, an, as a client, they would be happy because they're giving them what they want. And you also have such photo ops where you sort of make sure people, there's, there's instant gratification. Now that's something that we always talk about. There is some more work when we come to installations. Some auto expo stuff as well and music. As you can see, there is more of music stuff. So I'm gonna quickly skim through and at the same time bring on to some more slides of things like these, set designs as well. Now, what do we talk about set designs? now? This is another medium of art that I want to talk about because since we're talking about exploring through art, right? Now this is creating a setting entirely. This was something, was a Halloween party where we said, you know what, let's create something of sorts which is, which, which is remnant of a, 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 you know, a haunted house, which is why you end up seeing a bathtub there, you ended up seeing things there, you ended up also had one big four foot giant disco ball which was in the shape of a skull. And then we obviously deployed some actors, so you know, sort of have that whole vibe. So 
plenty of stuff that we do, but that at the same time, you know, it's fun to sort of keep shifting through things, which brings me to my next thing that we also sort of work on to is interiors. Right now, obviously I'm not an architect, but at the same time, I like to take up challenges. And the reason why we end up doing newer things each time is because I feel like that makes the whole, you know, the environment in the studio very lively and makes sure that, you know, we've got in enough challenges for us to say, let's do something new today, right? So these are some of the things that we've designed as a studio as well. So not just temporary stuff, there's also permanent stuff that you're looking at. Now this is a store uh, from Delhi called Almost Gods and there's more stuff as well. Uh, another interior store. So there's all of that stuff. So exploring, exploring, and you can see there's more exploring. And then we come to the last segment, which is Style Bhai. Now, what is Style Bhai, really? It's this. <laughs> Just joking. This is not what Style Bhai is. Style Bhai essentially is, uh, you know, these range of jackets that sort of one day were born. Why? Because I had this one jacket lying, which was a fake Burberry jacket that I didn't want to part ways with. And I was like, you know what? It'll be nice to just sort of get it painted. Let's see what it looks like. So I went to the closest street, street painter. I told him, just do your thing. And uh, I'd put it up on Instagram. And uh, uh, you know, instantly, people started saying, OK, we also want. Uh, publications started reaching out saying, OK, I love the fact you're working with artisans and you're doing things with artisans and you know, you're sort of reviving their uh, job as well. And in my head, I was like, I honestly didn't think of any of this. And slowly, you know, it started becoming a thing where people were like, we also want more and more publications started coming to me. And that's when I realized, you know, after speaking to all these artisans across the country, the newer generation didn't want to do it. And it's also purely because, you know, the way digitization is happening, how fast paced the world is, crafts have sort of taken a back seat in the country. And, you know, this is where I felt like, okay, we need to do something. I, I don't want to call myself probably the torchbearer, but I, I always felt like maybe, you know, hum to aage badi rahe. maybe we can also help them to take them along with us. So we ended up, okay, this is the same jacket. Yes. Ooh. Uh, yes, the idea was essentially to just say, you know, Let's help these artisans out. So whatever happens, right? So we end up doing collab deals with Adidas, Gas, you know, Superdry, all these guys. So whatever happens, whatever proceeds come, they go directly because, you know, I felt like, you know, it'll be best that they end up benefiting from this because the second generation essentially started taking up, you know, uh, uh, jobs such as things that, you know, they would not be doing, for example, becoming drivers or things like that. So ended up doing some more of that stuff and some more. And this was something that we ended up doing with uh, Rohit Sharma as well. Oh, this happened very recently. This is again. So as you can see, these are all painted by artisans and stuff like that. So I'm going to skip through some more of these designs. So you see how much of exploration there has been. It hasn't ended that way. So uh, yes, that happened. And I was just like, you know what? All these years, I felt like maybe I'm not the kind who would probably end up on a Forbes list because why? Just took school pass out, right? No college, none of that. And uh, yes, I see you. And uh, all of that aside, ended up getting more of these things only because I felt like, you know, let me just continue doing what I do. And that's what I've sort of over the years have, you know, come in as a reward saying, okay, keep doing what you're doing and it will follow. 